let us uh, continue to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Can I please ask each and every one of us to stand up? Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Can we please, if you have your Bible, let's open it in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 to 22. The word of the Lord. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandment and regulations. His purposes was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which we put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For though in him we both have access to the Father by one spirit, consequently you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Let us thank the Lord for reading his words. Let us pray. Our most gracious Lord, our heavenly King, our teacher, our Almighty, thank you very much for gathering us this afternoon and thank you very much, O Lord, for the privileges and opportunity to hear your words once more. Father, it is our prayer that you bless and anoint these very words, O God, that they may have a bearing in our life, that through these words, may we be transformed to be the person, Lord, that you want us to be. And Father, as for this humble servant, I continue to humble myself. I continue to seek and pray that you hide me behind you. I pray, O Lord, that you hide me with your cloth, that Father God, none of me is going to be considered, but Lord, let it be known that I am just a mere mouthpiece of yours. So, Father, all glory and honor, uh, praises belongs to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Again, it's getting colder. Amen. So, sometimes, if it's colder, it's very easy to fall asleep. So tell your brother or your sister next to you, if you see me dozing, just shake me as violent that <laughs> I will be awakened. Thank you very much and uh, welcome back, Tisha. Tisha is uh, with us here from uh, Scotland. And uh, again, uh, to each and every one of us, uh, in behalf of the uh, uh, Cristobal family, the family of our dear sister Alice, in behalf of her friends and families, they just want to convey and express their thanks and appreciation to all of you. Amen? They uh, did not imagine, they did not realize how much their family member, their friend, is loved by you guys. So again, in behalf of them and personally, I want to thank each and every one of you as well. 
Amen, church? Hallelujah. So let us continue. Praise the Lord. So if you want, the title of our message today is, uh, it's going to be a question. Amen? The title of our message today is a question. It's a question meaning, what is church? Amen? What is church? And why are we in it? In Tagalog, ano po ba yung simbahan? And bakit tayo nandirito? Amen, church? What is church and why are we in it? Amen? Hallelujah. You know, the most common question that you hear from people is, do I really need to be a member of a church? Do I really need to be a part of a church? Do I need to go to the church even? Yeah, many people. I know a lot of people that um, you invite them. Let's go to the church. Hi, I'm busy. I ah, know let's it's important that we um, accommodate some time to come to the church. No, I don't need that because to be honest, I'm not doing any bad things. I am not sinning. Yeah? Hindi ako nagkakasala. Hindi ako gumagawa ng masama. I'm not committing sin. No? So, a lot of people, especially in the Filipino community, ay, di bali dahil hindi ako magsimba because wala naman akong ginagawang masama. Hindi naman ako nagchichismis ng mga buhay ng mga may buhay. Maayos naman ang aking kalakal. So, hindi ko kailangang magpunta ng church. So, that is a common question. Do I even need to become a part of the church? Do I even need to go to the church? That are one of the most common questions. Amen, church? None of us suddenly exist. If you are not convinced, feel we have a navel in here. Amen? Meron tayong pusod. So none of us suddenly exist. If you do not have a navel, then probably uh, you just came out from the uh, kawayan, bamboo, or maybe you just came out from a struck uh, stone. So my dear brothers and sisters, none of us suddenly exist. Amen? All of us were an offspring of our parents. Amen? Either one or both of the parents are not existent. Either one or both of the parents, you have not met them. You have not met them. Maybe some of us have a story like that, that their parents just met, and then one got pregnant, and then one left. So they did not have the opportunity to meet their, both their parents. But my dear brothers and sisters, whatever the dynamics of the family, all of us were an offspring of our parents. Amen. And so we became a family. Amen, church. We became a family when two parents had an offspring, a child, which is you, or if you have other siblings, other child, and it becomes a family. Amen, church. That's the dynamics of a family. And sometimes there are probably family that are quite more complicated dynamic than more straightforward. Diba? There are other family who have their step parents, step uh, brothers, or half brothers, or half uh, sisters. There are quite uh, family dynamic that are less straightforward than others. But my dear brothers and sisters, the point that I am trying to um, establish in here is all of us were an offspring to our parents. Amen? And all of us is a part of our natural family. Amen, church? Amen? Does it make sense? All of us is a part of a natural family. So to answer the question that what is a church? Do I need to be a part of a church? Do I need to be in the church, my dear brothers and sisters? Like what I have said, all of us is part of our natural family. And the Lord designed a natural family. However, the dynamics it is, is what is the purpose 
of being in a natural family. All of us were in a natural family in order for that family that we are part of to care for us, to look after us in our growth. Amen, church? Amen? Amen. There are children who the moment that they were born, ipinapamigay. They are being given for adoption. They are being given to someone else. But someone else must have to raise the children. Amen, church? Even there are probably a very sad story of children that uh, absent parents or there's no family in there. That yes, they probably have grown in the street. But still, the system has helped someone to raise. Amen, church? Maski ikaw, sabihin mo, even you, if you um, lumaki ka by just depending sa tulong, sa help of other people, still, someone has helped to raise you. Amen, church? So we cannot avoid that. Amen? So it is the design of the Lord that each and every one of us is gonna become a part of a natural family in order for this natural family to help us be raised physically and secondly, in order for us to achieve the maximum outcome that we can be. Amen, church? Amen. That is the goal of each and every person that is being born. Amen, church? You are privileged. You are blessed to become a nurse, especially people who came from overseas like us. We are blessed, we are privileged to be able to come in here, to be able to go abroad. But my dear brothers and sisters, don't forget that those were the sacrifice of the earthly family that the Lord has raised you, has put you into, who not only raised you physically, but my dear brothers and sisters, sacrifice and raise you in order for you to become the maximum of who you are right now. Amen, church? In order for you to become the person you are right now. Amen? Are you blessed of what you have become? Especially the parents? Are you blessed of what you have become? Now that you are here in the land called UK, remember when we were young back in the Philippines, we only sing it, London Bridge is falling down. But now you are here and you are even stepping in London Bridge. It, does, it did not actually fall. Amen. Who among us in here? Who is here enjoying, reaping the benefit and then you can tell yourself that, oh, my family has no participation in this. No. Amen. Amen. Amen, church? So in the same, my dear brothers and sisters, that our spiritual family, are you with me? Our spiritual family, which is called the church, is designed by God as well. If you need to grow and develop physically, you must have to grow and develop spiritually as well. Amen, church? And where the Lord designed the physical family for an environment for you to grow up physically and to be nurtured physically and the same as spiritually, my dear brothers and sisters. The church is the place that God designed for us to grow, to develop, and to nurture spiritually as well. Amen, church? And not just to grow, develop, and be nurtured spiritually, but for us as well, to have the maximum outcome. Amen. What is our common denominator? That one day, we will go home to heaven, standing in the presence of the Lord. That one day, we will all be welcomed by the Lord. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen, church. Isn't it? That is our goal. Amen. That is our goal. And my dear brothers and sisters, again, the Lord put you 
into a spiritual family in order to lead, to be led, in order to achieve, in order to be nurtured, in order to be maximized on that ultimate goal. Amen po. Amen. And Acts chapter 17 verses 26 to 27, it says in here, From one man, God made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he, make, he marked out their appointed times in histories and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they may seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. So my dear brothers and sisters, what is this trying to say? What is this trying to say, my dear brothers and sisters, is you are not an accident. Nor is your situation, nor your who you are is not an accident. Amen, church. That it is the Lord who plays each and every one of you, each and every one of us, in a specific place of dwelling at a specific time. Amen, church. Common story. We were all born in the Philippines and our at age 20 plus because of the hardship of life, we go overseas. Amen. And when we go overseas, we keep on jumping from one country to another until we land into that ultimate green pasture. Amen, church. Many of us in here were in other countries before they arrived here. Amen. Some of us, this is their first place abroad. And they settle straight away because we found our common denomination. This is our greener pasture. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, whether you jump from country to country or whether you came here straight, it was not an accident. It was the Lord who planned it all along. Amen, church. Why is it that when you come, when you went to Saudi, why did you not settle in there? Because the Lord only a portion that you will only be there for a certain time in season. Amen, church. I came from Israel. I spent five years in there. And if it, was, if it is about me, if it was for me, I would have never left Israel. I did not have plans. People are applying to go to Canada, Australia, UK, Ireland. I did not have a plan. I did not want to come in here. I want to stay there. But the Lord used circumstance. With a heavy heart, I applied to come in here. All, where some of you were very keen, embraced with open arms, I struggled. I, 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 I did not want to come in here. But the Lord used the circumstance. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is the Lord who placed us into a specific place in a specific season. Amen, church. Yes, by all means, for you to have your greener pasture, but ultimately, what is the ultimate goal in there? So that in this place, in that place, that we will seek Him. Amen. That we will seek Him, that we will call upon Him. Because if you are seeking Him, if you are calling Him in the place where the Lord put you to be, it says in there, you will find Him. Amen, church. So in the same way that the Lord place your built, your houses, some of you in Borden, Basingstock, Alton, Aldershot, but ultimately that is where the Lord place you. Amen. And again, if that is what happening in the physical, no surprise that the same in the spiritual. Amen, church. Why is it that some of us were church hopping as well? Amen. There were histories, there are cases where people hop from church to church until they ultimately land in the place where the Lord put them to be. Amen, church? Amen? So in the same way, 
that the Lord has put us into our natural family, after being saved, the Lord placed us into our spiritual family as well. Amen, church? The Lord has placed us in our spiritual family. And again, going back, to be nurtured, to be raised, to grow in faith, my dear brothers and sisters, to be matured. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And in the passage that we read, Apostle Paul as well teaches us to understand what is a church? Why are we in a church? Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, number one, in the church, we become partners of the gospel. Amen? That's why I said earlier in the beginning that we are more than Christians, we are more than believers. We are called partners in the ministry with Christ. Amen, church? So in the church, we become partners of the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, there are various kinds of service. Amen? But of the same Lord. Amen, church? Yes, the Lord may not have given you the gift like uh, Brother Alan to stand in here and lead the praise in worship. The Lord may not give you the gift like Gab to sit down in there and play the music. The Lord may not give you the gift to stand in here and lead and pastor the church. But like I have always told you, my dear brothers and sisters, even if you are sitting in there, it is in self as a ministry. Amen, church. Even whether you stand in here or you sit down in there, we are all equal co-partners in the ministry of the Lord. Amen. There are various kinds of service. In the church, there are the ministry of preaching and the ministry of saying amen. Amen. That is the principle of that is the principle of agreement, my dear brothers and sisters. As the pastor preaches, you may not, you may not, you did not say the actual very word, but as you express in agreement, amen, it becomes your spiritual statement as well. You know, if you go to the house of parliament or in the Philippines, let's stay local. If you go to the house of Congress, someone will pass a bill. Other people who do not have any idea what that bill is, as long as they affirm their signature in there, it becomes part of the record. If that bill is being ratified, they said, oh, these are the co-authors of that bill. When in fact, you ask them, he said, I don't know, I just put my name in it. Amen, church. That is the principle of agreement. So we are all partners in the ministry. Amen, church. So becoming a part of a local church, becoming a part of a spiritual family, we become partners in the ministry of the gospel. Amen, church. Again, if we are confused at this very point, I just want to clarify, I just want to make us understand that the church is not the building. Amen. The church is not the building. The church is not the activity. Amen. The church is not the activity. The church is more than us coming together. The church is more than our fellowshipping together. The church is more than our common belief that we profess together. The church is the partnership in the ministry of Christ. Amen, church. 
Even if we, how many times that we associate the word church in our group. If what we are doing is not in partnership, is in the ministry of Christ, we will never be called church. You will simply be called group organization. Does it make sense? My dear brothers and sisters, even if you associate the word church to what we are doing to our group, to the seer, if what we are doing is not partnering with the ministry of Christ, then we are not a church. We will always be an organization. We will always be a group. Amen, church. So the church is not the building. The church is more than the fellowshipping together of the people. The church is more than the professing of the belief of the people. The church is the partnership. It's partnering with Christ. Amen? We have read that earlier in Hebrews 3.14 that it says in there that we are partners with Christ. So let us hold firm. Let us stand firm until the end. What are we going to stand firm? What are we going to hold firm? My dear brothers and sisters, the faith that we profess from the very start. That's what it says in there. Amen, church. Because my dear brothers and sisters, what is a church? The church is more than the building. The church is more than the people. But the church, my dear brothers and sisters, is people who are living at peace. Amen. People who are living at peace. If you think about it, how can I be at peace if there is a looming war? You know, Putin has many times during this week alone issued a threat that intending to attack the UK as well because of their meddling in the war in Ukraine. How can I be at peace, Pastor, when all the news, this is what is written in there? Let us read again. I will remind, let us re be reminded again of the passage that we read earlier. Yes, all the world might be chaotic. Yes, there may be a lot of threat. There is going to be a war and rumors of war. But the Bible says in verse 14, Ephesians chapter 2, For Christ himself is our Peace. Amen. Amen. For Christ himself is our peace. So again, the safest place on earth is where Christ is. Amen, church. For Christ himself is our peace. Who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier. He destroyed the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his, in his flesh the law with its commandment and regulation. His purposes was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace. What it is telling in here, my dear brothers and sisters, is in a sense, we were all Gentiles. And these are the Jews, God's people. But the moment that we receive the Lord as our Lord and Savior, the Lord has taken away that wall of division, that wall of hostility between the Jew and the Gentiles. And there is no more two, but there is only one. There is no more Gentile, there is no more Jew, but one new man. Amen, church. So the same thing in us. We were once a sinner. Amen. We were once a sinner, but the moment that we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has broken that power of sin in us. The Lord has broken the curse of sin in us. Amen, church. So if you are the one who has been delivered, if you are the one 
who the power of sin in the grave has been taken away from them, would you not be in peace? Amen, church. Would you not be in peace? The Lord has given us reconciliation. Amen. The Lord has given us reconciliation. Who are the people in here who are at peace? The Lord says, Matthew 10, 28, Do not fear those who kill the body. Amen. But cannot do anything with your soul. But fear him who has the power to destroy both your body and your soul in hell. Amen, church. Yes, there may be threat of war and rumors of war. Yes, physically, it may be realistic to be in fear. But if you are in Christ, Christ became your peace. Amen, church. Christ became your peace. The word of the Lord, Matthew 10, 28. Why do you fear all these rumors of war, all these threats that are here to threaten to destroy our physical body? They cannot do anything with our soul. But we need to be fear of is the one who is no other than the Lord. That if we are not going to enter into a peace agreement with him, not only is our physical body be destroyed, but including our soul in hell. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, people, you, you are already reconciled with the Lord. So you should be at peace. We should be at peace. How many threats that will come and go? It should not affect us. It should not affect you. Amen, church. But if you are not reconciled with the Lord, then you have a reason to be in fear. Amen. So again, my dear brothers and sisters, the church is not the building. The church is not the people. I mean, the church is not the building. The church is not the activity. It's the people gathering. More than fellowshipping, more than professing their belief, it's the church gathering who are in partners with Christ. And who are these people, my dear brothers and sisters? People who made Christ their peace. Amen. People who are not, who should not be fearing anymore of anything in this earth. Amen. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Not only that the Lord reconciled us with Him. Like I say, when we are reconciled from the Lord, we are given peace. But secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, in verse 16 to 18, it says in there, and in this one body, not only that we are reconciled, amen, both of them to God through the cross by which He put to death their hostility. We came and preached peace to you who were far apart and peace to those who were near. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. If you are not at peace with the Lord, you know, the thing of the physical is in hostile with the thing of the spiritual. Amen. Anything physical is hostile, is enmity with the spiritual. That's the reason why, my dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord came to put to death that hostility as well. Amen. Everyone, my dear brothers and sisters, who were reconciled with God, has put to death that hostility. Amen. Amen. Sino ang tumanggap kay Kristo rito? Amen. Dahil tumanggap na tayo kay Kristo, naging hostile na tayo sa mga chismis. Ano pa? Ano pa yung mga dapat hindi na natin ginagawa? Swearing. Amen. Whatever it is the natural sin of our body, dapat 
Hostile na tayo. Ayaw na natin. We don't want them anymore. We don't entertain them anymore. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 5 to 7, it says in there, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Amen. For to set the mind and the flesh is death, but to set the mind and the Spirit is life and peace. For that mind is set unto the flesh, is hostile to God, for it that does not submit to God's law. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, when we became a believer, okay, that's the reason why the, the, the point when you became a believer is when you repented. Amen, church? When you repented. And repentance is more than asking a prayer of forgiveness. Repentance is more than crying to the Lord, asking for the Lord to forgive us. Repentance is more than that. Repentance is when after you pray the prayer of forgiveness. Repentance is after you pray the sinner's prayer, you begin to walk away from the world. You begin to walk away from the sin. You begin to walk towards God. Amen, church? We begin na hindi na ginagawa talikuran kung ano man yung ini-enjoy nating gawin na hindi nakaka-glorify sa Panginoon. Amen. And let us face the Lord. And not only face the Lord, it says in there, let us now focus to the Lord. Amen, church. Eh, ba't para kayong may sili sa puwet na, ano, pa ganun. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah! So again, church is not the building. Church is not the activity that we are doing. Church is the fellowship of reconciled people with God. Amen, church. Will there be a member of the church that is not a Christian? That is not a believer? Answer me. No. Amen, church. You can come to a church service. You can come to a church gathering. You perfect the attendance coming. But if you do not convert, if you are not a Christian, if you did not accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, well, to the eyes of the pastor, they'll say that, yes, come, brother, come, sister, you are our member. But to the eyes of the Lord, the Lord will say, no, I don't know you. Amen. Amen, church. That's the reality. Amen. That's the reason why my prayer, my dear brothers and sisters, is in Philippians chapter 1, verse 5 to 6, my prayer is that the Lord who began a good works in you, will bring it to completion until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, church. And what is it that the Lord has begun a good works in you? Verse 5, partnership in the gospel. Amen. So whether you stand here and pray for the children, whether you stand here and exhort the giving, whether you stand here and help with ushering the communion, whether you stand here and play the instrument, whether you stand here and back up and sing songs, whether you stand there in compliment and shout hallelujah, whether you coming here and sitting down for the very first time, the Lord has already started a good works in you. Amen. 
And it is my prayer that the Lord will bring that to completion. Amen, church. So look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. You are looking at someone who is the Lord's partner. Amen. You are looking at someone who is the Lord's partner in that gospel. Amen. So when the Lord said that, I am confident of this, that he who began a good works in you will bring it to completion. What is that? That partnership in the gospel. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. We may not be the Messiah. We may not be the Christ. Well, not me. We are not the Messiah. We are not the Christ. We cannot do anything to save other people from their sin. But we are a partner. Amen, church. It is only Christ who can do all those. But the Christ is offering you partnership. Amen. So again, what is a church? Church is not a building. Church is not the activity. Church is you. Church is you. Who the Lord offered that partnership. And if you have accepted that partnership, if you accepted because again, Christ will not force you. He will offer it to you. It's up to you to grab it. Amen, church. So again, the question is, what is a church? Yes, this is a church building. The activity that is happening in here signifies the church. But if we want to, what really is a church? Where you are part of your physical family. The Lord put you as well in the spiritual family that is called a church. So be a part of your local church. Amen, church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So in conclusion, Hebrews 10.25. Hi. Memory verse. Hebrews 10.25. Let us not neglect. Why are you laughing, Sister Grace? Let us not neglect meeting together, fellowshipping together. What do we do when we come to the church? We meet together, we fellowship together. And it says in there, let us not neglect doing that. As some of us are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We know that the day is approaching. Amen. Amen. It is not coming. It is here. Amen, Amen church. Amen. Hallelujah. No? Don't worry. I will watch online na lang. Don't worry. I will go to this church. Or I will go to that church next. And the next, I will go to that church. No, my dear brothers and sisters. We need, again, pay attention. Ha? Don't misconstrued what I'm trying to say. We need to be a part of a local church. I think that's very big difference na I'm not saying that you need to be a part of Sior. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need to be a part of your local church. Amen. We need to be a part of a spiritual family. Amen. If the Lord put you here in Sior, thank you. Amen. If the Lord put us here in Sior, then Lord, thank you. Thank you for your life. But my dear brothers and sisters, kailangan nating maging kabilang. We need to be a part of a local church. Amen. Don't worry, I will do online. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything wrong so I do not have to go to the church. No, my dear brothers and sisters, let us not neglect meeting together. 
You know, sometimes we have situation where we are not in control. We are here in the UK, we are working, and sometimes we are working on shift. So we work weekend. So even with the best intention, we cannot be in two places at the same time. Amen. And the Lord knows that. What the Lord knows is, you don't have a work weekend, but because there is an increment, you overtime on a weekend. That's a big difference. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Missing a day in the church is not a sin. Especially if there are no other alternatives. Like I say, you are on shift. What can you do? Sometimes we sin more by creating a reason to the manager just to be able to come to church. It does not reflect the life of a Christian. Diba? Sometimes we reason out to the manager and we come to church and, Oh, mabuti na lang, nandito ako. Hindi mo kwento, what do you have to, ano yung tinahitahi mo para nandiyan ka. Amen. So sometimes, again, my dear brothers and sisters, missing a day in the church is not a sin. It becomes a problem if it becomes a habit. <laughs> Di ba? It becomes a sin if it becomes a habit. <laughs> It becomes a sin if that's the easiest thing that we do. The first time that you do not want to come to church or the first time that you are not able to come to church, you struggle. You try your very best to be able to arrange something for you to be able to come. But if it happens regularly, at the back of our mind, it just becomes a very easy option. Diba mga kapatid? Diba? Even, amen. The very first time that you are not able to come to church, you even come and stand and testify. Again, reality, my dear brothers and sisters. You even come and testify and say that, oh, when I was not here last weekend, my whole week is not complete. I was struggling. I was feeling low because I really want to be in the church. But when you do not come to the church, become a habit, my dear brothers and sisters, it becomes the easiest thing to do. Every reason becomes reasonable. Before, there is no reason why we cannot come to church. But when it becomes a habit, every reason is reasonable not to come to church. Masakit ang ganito, masakit si ganito. Busy si ganito, busy doon. I will do this, I will do that. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord put us as well in a spiritual family just as we are in our physical family to be able to be raised, nurtured, to mature in that area. Amen. So it is very important it is very important for us to be a part of a local body of Christ. Amen. Amen. It is very critical in our life as a believer to come and attend our regular service, our regular fellowship. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just gonna go back one, one more phrase and that's it. We'll close. The Lord put us in our spiritual family in order for us to be raised, to be nurtured, to mature. Amen, church? Amen. Is that your expectation of what a church is like? Amen. Is that your expectation of what a church is like? Yun ba yung gusto nyong mangyari of being in a church? In order for us to be raised, to grow, to nurture, to develop, to mature. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Amen. In order for that to happen, come to church. Amen. Let's bring in the music team, my dear brothers and sisters.
Hallelujah. Napakabuti po ng Panginoon. The Lord is very, very good. We acknowledge the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love of the Father. Love of the Father. Okay. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us stand up. And um, I want to encourage us. I want to invite us, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, by any standards, we are not good enough. We are not good enough. There is nothing special in us. There is nothing likable in us. We are nothing. But when Christ entered the picture, we became everything. We became the apple of God's eye. Amen, church. So what I want us to do at this very moment is as the music team, led us into this ministry worship. Why don't we just connect with the Lord? And just say that, Lord, thank you very much for your love. I am not deserving. I am not good enough. I am nothing. I am no one. But thank you because you invited me to be partners. Because you welcome me in your brood. You welcome me in your family. And that is all because of the love of the Father. My dear brothers and sisters, look at the, our music team. They are rearing and they are eagerly to be used by the Lord. Amen. Let us allow them and the Lord opportunity by opening our hearts this afternoon.
Can we just spend this moment in stillness and quietness and just feel the Father's love through His warm embrace? Church, just rest in the Father's embrace. allow the Father to embrace us to affirm us to comfort us you can rest in His embrace just rest in His embrace are you tired? Are you exhausted? Are you confused? Are you in pain? Are you frustrated? Are you in your trying times? Did you want to cry? the Father. Bakit hindi natin subukang yakapin ng Panginoon? Bakit hindi natin subukang ibalik ang kanyang mga yakap? Bakit hindi mo subukang ihilig ang iyong mga ulo sa kanyang dibdib? Your Father our Father is longing for you. Brother, sister, even you are online. Do not be afraid to be vulnerable in the front of your Father. there is anyone he knows best what you are going through he knows best to understand you you know you don't even have to say something you don't even have to pray to utter as a father he can see he can feel even that secret that you are most protecting. He knows it. He knows it. Just come. Just come. Just come and say, Father, my Father, my Father,
Let him take away everything and anything. You know, he gave his son Jesus Christ for you. He became the propitiation of everything that you have done. Jesus became the curse that is supposed to be upon us. Jesus Christ has been punished for the punishment that is supposed to be upon us. Jesus Christ suffered inhumane. Jesus Christ was crucified and Jesus Christ died in our stead. In that cross, Jesus was forsaken. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabaktani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus was forsaken 2,000 years ago in that cross so that you will not be forsaken now today He is your Father He is our Father Trust in Him Surrender to Him Gave your everything to Him Hallelujah Lord our Father Thank you very much for your love. And thank you very much, Father God, that you have conveyed that love to us in many ways. First, giving the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, who became the firstborn of all of us. Thank you very much, Father God, that you have given us a family. That you have called us into your family. Thank you very much, O Lord. That you have made us a part of the body of your Son, Jesus. That you have offered that partnership of that service and ministry to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your setup. That though physically we are a part of the physical family, but spiritually that we are a part of our spiritual family as well. And thank you very much, Father God. Thank you very much because, Lord, without our spiritual family, we will be like a ship without a shepherd. So thank you very much, Jesus, for your body. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be a part of that body and to be a partner of the ministry that you have set forth to do. Lord, I personally thank you very much for this church. Thank you very much for the lives of my brothers and sisters as you have brought them in this place as you have brought them in this your family Lord praises and thanksgiving to your name may in between us and among us may we be able to give you all the praises and glory and honor that you deserve Thank you that you are our Father. And thank you that we have the privileges to be called your children. Thank you, Lord. Church, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all evermore. Amen. Let's give the best clap offering to our Father. May God bless you all. Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Are you blessed by the Word of God? Amen. Are you blessed today? Let us stand up. And let us sing our praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Clap our hands to the Lord. Amen. Let everything, everything that has prayed, that has prayed. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, everything that has prayed, that has prayed. Praise, the Lord. praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise in the valley.
Wow! Hallelujah! Uh, just a very short announcement before uh, we close. Um, yeah, many of you has uh, expressed their initiative that uh, obviously that is all uh, gonna up to you if that's what you want. But uh, many of you express that, you know, our celebrations, birthdays and uh, anniversaries is if we can do it once a month. Yeah, once a month. So I think this September, uh, are we doing it next week? So all the celebrants, birthday celebrants or uh, wedding anniversary will celebrate next week. Uh, kita ko si Ate Julie. Ay, mas maganda. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we celebrate our uh, all uh, birthdays and anniversaries next week. Okay? Uh, I mean, there's probably some time where, again, even with the good intention, you are not able to come and uh, it gone past your birthday or anniversary. We make sure that when you come back, we, we will pray for you and we can always celebrate in the spirit naman. Amen, church? So, again, um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, invite, you, you invite our brothers and sisters, invite others to come and uh, join us next week. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are in need of prayer, we are here, they are there, they are there. Please come. We will be blessed to pray with you. Okay? Thank you.